time than that. Hello. Yeah. Mic check. Mike Good check. evening, Dreams Asian TV. This is Arif Ali. Pepper Prasad. And we have a special guest this evening from Tubbs Entertainment. The homie Ritesh is in the place joining us. Hi, everyone. And um, a big shout out to Shana TV, Dreams Asian TV, all the people watching on Facebook Live. Um, this is our almost a month worth of doing these episodes. Yes. And uh, we've had a few really entertaining guests. We've had some pretty cool conversations about things that we care about. Um, mm -hmm. But before we get started, what do you prefer to be called? Uh, Tubbs is great. Tubbs is good? Yeah. Okay. Because I didn't want, you know, just because it says Tubbs Entertainment, I didn't want to put you out there like that. No. I've had the nickname since like grade six. So oh, word. It started off as Tubby, but oh. as a promoter, Tubby was too soft. So here we are. So you've learned to love it. Yeah. That's pretty great. Yeah. And build an build empire. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. That's amazing. So really interesting for me having this conversation because we're in Surrey right now. Um, <laughs> I grew up in East Van. And interestingly enough, you also grew up in East Van. Yep. Born and raised. Turns out we went to the same high schools. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, Pepper's wearing pink, kind of. Mm. I, it is pink. Uh, it's kind of a no, dusty it's rose. Pink. It's pink. It's kind of a dusty it's rose. It's pink. Tubbs is wearing pink. Yep. He is representing because today is anti-bullying day. Yes. And I'm not wearing pink because I don't have anything pink. <laughs> um, I'm also not big on commemorating activism one day out of the year. Yeah. And uh, I know people are probably being cynical, saying, oh, that's not the way, that's not what it's meant to be. I get that's <laughs> not what it's meant to be. But that's kind of what it is. Like, everybody wants to stop bullying for one day, and then tomorrow go back to being a jerk again. <laughs> right? That may not be the case, but it kind of feels like that when people say, oh, where's your pink? Where's your pink? Because Pepper was harassing me about pink. <laughs> I was not, but I just... Okay, maybe one or two texts. You were low-key <laughs> offended. I was not. A, a little bit. A little no. Bit. Little All bit. I said is, I was in a rush. I was multitasking. I'm like, you have no pink? Seriously? Seriously, I don't. <laughs> so... It, so being that we both went from, uh, you know, an East Van High School. Yep. Um, the first thing you said was that your name that you referred to was Tubby. Did you find it a form of bullying? So, like, no, because there was way worse things that people would call me. Mm -hmm. And so I had, like, a few of my friends that were like, hey, man, like, let's just give you, like, a fun name where, like, you're not going to be, like, you know, harassed. And that was, like, in grade six. And I got that name from a buddy of mine who's still a friend of mine today. And, um... Yeah, and it just kind of stuck, and I thought I'd get rid of it by high school. But, you know, you walk into high school, and someone's like, hey, aren't you tubby? And, like, <laughs> all right, it sticks, and then you think you're going to get rid of it by college, and you walk into Kwantlen, <laughs> and someone calls you tubby again, and you're like, all right, cool. This is done. Never going to be gone. So, yeah, I just embraced it, and and, uh, and I love it. Yeah, like, I, I play with it, and, and I enjoy it, and, yeah, it's cool. So, so you embraced it? Yeah. And then you took it, mm -hmm. and you made it into your, like, empire, basically. Yeah, like totally. You, Why not? Yeah, that's amazing. I, that's... I had other promoting companies in the past with other names, but mm -hmm. after a while, I realized people were coming out to hang with me or to party with me. So mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? We'll just call it Tubbs Entertainment because mm -hmm. they're coming to see me. So there we are. How was your J.O. experience? Uh, amazing. You know, people always say, oh, if I went back to high school, I'd do this and that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I wouldn't change a thing. Um, I wouldn't say I was a popular kid. Yeah. I was probably a misfit, to be honest. But <laughs> I embraced high school like I tried to join as many teams as I could yeah. if I couldn't join the team I would become the water boy um, you That's know dope. Um, dope, uh, I would try to join every club I could I would join students council I just tried to like live the full experience and I think that's why I really enjoyed it because I got the most out of it um, and why can yeah I, see him? I can see him student council oh yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. running things oh like my posters would say vote for tubs or, you know like <laughs> I really embraced it like I'm telling you <laughs> that's amazing so you didn't experience the, uh, the the hazing or the bullying that comes from an East Van school oh I did as a misfit I definitely uh, you know uh, experienced it mm -hmm. um, you know I experienced the you know, not being part of the cool kids right. and, and all of that and mm -hmm. the cliques and the cliques in high school and all of that, definitely. Um, but also, like, bullying also led to, like, lots of fights and things like that yeah. in our high school. Mm -hmm. Like, East Van is a rough city, right? You sure. know, I'd be, I was on the football team and, you know, I'd be uh, going up to the offensive line and I'd be like, oh, where's my tackle? They're like, oh, he got stabbed yesterday. I'm like, oh, shit, okay, well. Ready, set, go. Like, you know. <laughs> no, but we're not laughing at it because it's, you know, it's a horrible thing. It's but a it, horrible it's, thing. It, it, that's how casual the violence is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That when we hear about it, we're kind of like, ah, oh, it's another day in these fan. Yeah. So. So nothing like California, where I'm from. Really? 
<laughs> well, okay, but hold on. Where in California? You're in the Bay, right? Yeah. So the Bay is, you know. We're all nice. Sweet as pie. But there's so much, so much gang activity. I think it's no. probably harder out there for sure. No. Well, maybe not for Indian people. Okay. Well, I'll, it was hard. <laughs> but you were probably the one of those kids that just kind of was always popular. <laughs> you can say it. It's okay. You can say it. You're still one of the popular kids. You know everybody yeah. everywhere you go. Yeah, I try to. Yeah. I mean, I, I met Ritesh because of your insistence on being in the one that introduces everybody to everybody. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I met a lot of my, like, people now yeah. through Pepper, for that sure. Yeah, great, but that's... Pepper likes to connect people. Yep. Remember that's where that. It's all love. That's where it's at. Yeah, that's right. Well, we don't get that enough. No. You know? mm. I think we spend a lot of time judging and hating and like, oh, that person does this, I'm not a fan, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, because, um, I mean... And my high school experience was a little bit different because we were kind of like in the heart of gang violence yeah. at that time. And um, yeah, I was in the basketball team. I tried to get good grades and stuff like that. But I was also like obsessed with hip hop. Yeah. And um, I presented myself that way. Mm -hmm. And the school at the time was a lot of East Indian dudes and mm -hmm. a lot of Asian dudes that did not really care for brown dudes in hip hop. Yeah. So, you know, I would get the N word or why are you trying to be black? Why are you trying to be this and that? But um, it was convenient having an older brother and cousin. Mm. That were kind of like, oh, you can't beat him up because he's got, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's got, he's got family and stuff. He's got friends that'll come and beat you up afterwards. That's kind of the high school. So life. I think, I think for me, I'm an only child, uh -huh. and I don't have a lot of family in uh, Vancouver. Mm -hmm. like I have a family abroad and all that. Um, so I never had that. I never had the older brothers, the older cousins. <laughs> so for me, like I would see my friends getting protected all the time, mm -hmm. and I was just like, yo, I just better be really nice to everybody, <laughs> so I don't get, you know, so, you know, like I, I used to get harassed, you know, like you'd be in the locker room and you know guys would like you know rough you up or mm -hmm. whatever throw you into lockers or whatever mm -hmm. when you're young and i just became really really sweet with everyone older <laughs> younger whatever it was and after a while no one would mess with me you know <laughs> so you learn you learn how to play 100 percent adapted 100 percent. you had to so if you if you were you know if this you know teen, young teenagers out here listening to this experiencing things that you know potentially are destructive and violent mm -hmm. what would you say what would you say gave you the the inner ability to overcome that and not, you know, fall into depression and not fall into, you know, hurting yourself or taking it on out of the people. What well, do you think was different? I think for me, like, like I said, like I really embraced the community, right? Mm -hmm. um, like I, like I said, only child, so not a lot of stuff going on at home. Parents, you know, mm -hmm. Immigrants working two jobs, of course. never saw them, right? Mm. Grew up with my grandparents. Mm. Um, so, like, I would be, you know, at the community center, you know, like, nice. um, you know, hanging out with people there, trying to make friends there, being at the park, you know, riding my bike, making mm -hmm. friends in the alley. Like, back then, you could it's do crazy. that. These, yeah. This day and age, you really can't. You can't even walk over <laughs> to school mm -hmm. at that age that we used to do that stuff. For sure. Um, but, yeah, like, I think just, like, embracing, like, the community and then just, like, trying to be friendly with everyone kind of, you know, helped me do that um and then like not to like go off on a tangent but it's mm. great that we're talking about this stuff today because yeah. uh and like coming both from east side schools mm. in my day we had this program called uh sister school switch so what they did mm. was they took schools all the east side schools and all the west side schools and they paired you up so we got paired up with west point gray and i was one of the 10 students that got picked to like go shadow a kid over there for two days and then they would come shadow me for two days and then on Friday, we would have to give a uh, like a report to like the district mm. and be like, this is what we learned about each other's schools. That's kind of oh, dope. Wow, that is really cool. It was such a cool yeah. experience, and I'm still friends with some of the people that I went to in that program with. I actually went to a birthday party of one of the girls that was in the program <laughs> wow. um, on Saturday, and like you know, like we've been friends for 15 years because of that. She That's never crazy. That's so um, nice. But the one thing I realized mm -hmm. that the West Side schools all um, thought was strange at our schools mm -hmm. was that everyone would kind of like talk to each other in the sense of like it didn't matter your age group demographic or whatever mm -hmm. people were still more friendlier than west side schools west side schools was like the tv clicks that you see like those are really like those are the jocks like i literally was following this kid and we were in science lab and his buddy matt was like you know they were doing all this lab stuff and they were super friendly and then we saw matt at lunch and this guy's like yo don't sit with matt and i was like but we just we just were in class with matt why, why can't we sit with matt and they were like no no he's not part of the gang and i'm like what uh, like you know but whereas when you went to jo yeah we had this thing where every time you saw someone you would shake their hand what's up even at the beginning of the day mm -hmm. any day you shake their hand yeah. what's up yeah. and it I, I don't know if it's a brown thing that we brought into this thing. it's a brown thing right <laughs> yeah. it's totally a brown thing um but because of that they were always shocked they were like yo that kid's like three years younger than you why are you mm -hmm. saying hi to him and I'm like, I don't know, he's like my buddy's cousin. Like, 
That What's up? is cool. You know, and so I think that the bond of community was much stronger in the east side schools than I think maybe in the west side schools. Wow. That's interesting. I would have. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can kind of see it. I'm not going to lie. I think this is the Tubbs and Arif show. <laughs> I feel kind of like. Uh, Get involved, yeah. Pepper. Come yeah, on. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, I well, went to just, East Van School too. Yeah. <laughs> we're just reminiscing about the good old days, right? <laughs> well, it's, it's cool because we were two different generations. Yeah. And um, by the time, you know, you were in your phase of graduating and things like that, J.O. was just starting to kind of clean up their act. Yep. And move into like a more academically sound school and not as much violence. And the crazy thing for me is I have kids that go to school in Port Coquitlam. Mm. And um, they described to me what bullying is. And I, I laugh. Yeah. So what did they describe? Oh, it's nonsense. It's like, you know, these subtle mean girl things where, like, <laughs> like you were just uh, about the West Side schools, like, you know, if you don't sit at the table with them. They're not the cool kids. Yeah. It's just, this, you know, these microaggressions that are really not detrimental to you physically. But I mm -hmm. guess yeah. because of this society we built where everything is offensive, mm -hmm. all of these little microaggressions become horrible acts of bullying. Like yeah. our bullying was like getting your, rip sh your shirt ripped off and thrown in a locker. That was bullying. Or your shoes getting <laughs> taken and you have to walk home bare feet. 100%. I live on Fraser Street, so people used to get tomatoes from like Polo Market and throw them in my house. Polo Market. You know, like Shout that was. Polo Market. Yeah, <laughs> my buddy owns it. Shout <laughs> out Steven. <That's> crazy. <laughs> but yeah, so like that was bullying. People throwing tomatoes at your house because wait, you. Wait, 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 wait. Which, which Steven is this? Steven Gill. Shut. Oh my goodness. You We're probably... about to get very small right now. So <laughs> you must know my little brother then. Is your little brother? Amir? Ali? Yes. That's your brother? That's my younger brother. Me and they were like best friends in high school. Like I said, Tubbs and Bro. Uh, I don't know what to say. He was up, I was like, every day, you can ask him about me. That, well, he writes for the Daily Hive now. Yes, I've seen that. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We had a little crew. He was one of the misfits. We were the misfits. Well, you said Steven. I'm like, Polo Market. Yeah. So me, him, guy? Amir, like we were a gang. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, kind of mind blown. That is a trip. So it's, I mean, he's he's a, a much different individual now. Doesn't really go out very much. He didn't go out much then either. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, he's not. He's much. He's kind of a homebody. Not really into hip hop or any of that kind of stuff. So, but wow, what a trip! Small world, little chat. Very. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pepper, yes, get I, in here. I, <laughs> I feel my, bad now. My, yeah, I don't really. Do you guys feel bad? Do no, you feel bad? no, because this is this is a great conversation. Yeah, yeah, it is a great conversation. And, 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 and the, you know. Maybe I should have stayed home. No, no. Trust me, there'll be plenty of space. Oh, okay. I, I just think that the, we. The, one more thing I want to cover is um, sunset. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Like the community center probably saved my life, right? Like Max. I used to volunteer at the old one, the one with the swimming pool, the yes. dollar swimming every day. I was out there, um, you know, and I volunteered just to kind of like. So, like I said, like I was like I didn't like staying at home because nothing was going on at home. Yeah. So I used to just be out, and you know I joined any free program that they had. I'd volunteer for the ones that I had to pay money for just mm -hmm. so I could be around. That's and amazing. then eventually, like, I started working there. I worked there for seven years. Wow. And the crazy thing now is when I go clubbing, I have kids that come up to me. They're like, yo, I was in your day camp program. Oh. Oh, or wow. you used to ref my <laughs> hockey games. And they're like, oh, man, you make me feel so old. But, you know, <laughs> legit, like, yeah, I remember you now. Yeah, it's crazy. That is amazing. It's it's all full, full circle for sure. It's so, cool. So I have a question for both of you. Mm -hmm. Just so that people know that I exist and I, I actually have questions. <laughs> Um, it's not pink. So uh, it is pink. <laughs> it's just washed a few times, <laughs> but it's pink. Anyways, so okay, so sunset. Mm -hmm. I know I've heard Arif say this many times mm -hmm. that it saved your life. Mm -hmm. Now Tubbs saying it. Mm -hmm. So this is sunset is like a community center. So it's a community center mm -hmm. that had after school programming every day from like three to five o'clock. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, they'd have open gym or whatever. So mm -hmm. you'd go in and you'd hang out. And it was really the safe spot for you to go. So you wouldn't just be loitering, you know, mm -hmm. anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they had great youth workers. Shout out Paul Senna. That guy was there for years. He's in Toronto now. We still mm -hmm. stay in oh, touch. Wow. Uh, he was the youth worker when I was a child. Um, wow. And, uh, you know, like seeing him build the relationships with me and my friends mm -hmm. made me want to kind of give back to the community. And that's what got me involved in volunteering there. And then eventually, you know, becoming a day camp leader and mm -hmm. project manager and then running all the after school programs for as long as I did. Wow. Um, 
and yeah, it's crazy. Like, like I, I won't lie to you. Like, I get kids. Like, I had one kid come up to me one time, like last year or two years ago mm-hmm. at the club, and he goes, "Hey, man, you're the reason I stopped smoking." And I was like, "Oh, wow. oh what? I don't even remember that." And he's like, "Yeah, man, I was like in you know grade nine trying to smoke, and you are like, yo, man, that's stupid. What are you doing?" And then wow. I stopped, and I was like, "Whoa, man, I don't even remember this." But he goes, "No, I remember it because you know you made an impact on my life." And I'm like, "Well, it's the that's center that brought amazing. us together, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's nothing that I physically meant to or tried to do, but." The center provided that space, right? Yeah. But, you know, to be honest, um, since I've met, I was going to say Ritesh Tubbs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm proper, so everybody knows that. I'm going to say Ritesh. I'm going to say Arif. And you guys can say Praveen if you want. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but since I've met him, he's the most positive guy that you will ever meet. Like, <laughs> this guy can be under pressure and doing, he's, like, moving a minute, like, like, I mean, he's going crazy, and he's still like, oh, hey, how's it going? Yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, no problem, and he's still multitasking, sending texts, and he's still, like, you know, doing his thing. And it's probably you, my OCD, to be honest. Like, <laughs> But you don't sweat it. You don't. just don't sweat it. So where does that come from? Yeah. I think, you know, like, we see our, like, parents' hard work and, like, mm-hmm. how are they worked and stuff, and I just, I think I've just been grown under that, mentality of like always hustling you know mm-hmm. like i think like mm-hmm. our generations we come from a hustle hustler oh, mindset sure. right yeah. um whereas i don't know i'm not to hate on younger generations but i don't see that hustle yeah. mindset mm-hmm. it's more like they're looking for well this is my value and this is what i bring and you know we were just talking about mm-hmm. earlier and and people have this mindset where it's like well no why don't you just do a little more effort and you'll you'll get more credit you know yes. like put in a little more work or work mm-hmm. a little harder or, you know what you know, you know, show up a few times for free, and then you'll you know get this and that. But yeah, it's just it's one of those things. I I think we come up from that generation mm-hmm. where we saw our parents hustle a lot, and you know maybe they don't see that these days. I wonder why that is. I always I always wonder. You know, like it really drives me crazy when uh, the younger generation think they're. You know, I don't well, know. It's, what, it's, what's it's, the right word to say? This but. is the thing. Like, with mm-hmm. things like the internet, it's, exa- it's exaggerated. Every, I don't know what's the right word, but it's made everything so attainable. Like, you see 19-year-olds mm-hmm. becoming millionaires, so you're oh. like, why can't I do it? Yeah. Like, in our generation, you're mm-hmm. like, I never saw that. I saw my parents work two jobs and barely pay the bills. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. like, but now you see those things are attainable, so mm-hmm. you're like, why not me? Um, but people don't realize it's a co- hard combination of hard work mm-hmm. behind the scenes that they don't see. You know, they see the wins, but they don't see the hours of training mm-hmm. or the hours yeah. of, you know, working. Um, and they don't see maybe the backing or the luck that that person might have that you don't have right mm-hmm. now, right? Yeah. So, yeah, because yeah. yeah, there, there is some luck involved too, man. Mm-hmm. And I mean, um, the, the crazy thing is, the community center at the time when I was in high school, the community organizer would literally go out to Henderson and pull kids from the school yeah. when they were hanging out. Like, yo, come inside. We're playing basketball today, floor hockey today, yeah. this and that today. And he made it a point to pull kids in. Mm-hmm. Because I remember, you know, when I was 12, maybe, uh, there were guys on my block that had just turned 16, just turned 17, and were pulling out with Corvettes. Yeah. Yeah. Brand new BMWs, and you know we're riding our bikes, thinking, "What is going on yeah. here?" Like my dad, you know, works sixty hours a week, and he drives a van. Yeah, seventeen-year-old <laughs> yeah. kids driving a brand new cherry red Corvette, and it's like you know. Then you start to figure out, you know, the street dreams that create these kind of things. But right. I think the what we forget is that every generation tries to make the world better for the next, mm. and unfortunately, what we do when we do that is we take away the struggle. Yeah. We don't want to kiss the struggle. Yeah. We don't want them to have to work as hard as yeah. we did. And we kind of pull off a lot of those, you know, those little hustle details yeah. mm-hmm. that make kids hungry, make kids want to push. Mm-hmm. But your kids don't have that problem. No. We had your son here a couple weeks ago. He's mm-hmm. motivated. Mm-hmm. He wants to do everything. Mm-hmm. What did? What do you think you did different that made him move that way? Because I think it's I think it's parenting. I think parenting is a huge part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, I, I, I just, honestly, I just parent. You know what? I don't really take, I don't really do too much, like, to be honest. Like, you know what? I just teach them, you know what? Always be humble. You're never going to get anywhere. Mm-hmm. Don't always think that you're entitled because mm-hmm. you're not because you really have to work hard. I always tell them that all day long. And right. I always tell them network, network, network because you never know where there's going to be an opportunity. Yeah, um, You know, 
Like it can be the, you know, I told him, I said, never judge a book by its cover. I said, you know what? You can see a man sitting there in like the raggediest clothes, but you have no clue what he's all about. Mm -hmm. Or where it would lead to, right? Or where it would lead to, exactly. And so, you know, like those are just some of the things. And you know what? God is blessing me with two beautiful children that are very driven um, and that are very um, motivated uh, very well spoken. So, uh, to be honest, I think it's all Tad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Tad gets a lot of love in the show. Yeah, he does. Maybe one day we'll bring Tad. He's on a great there. guy. Yeah, I like yeah. him. I like him. Oh, you've met the Listen. whole family. I, well, I think I haven't met the daughter yet. Right. No. Right. Have you I met met your son? No. Um, no, only a Tad. Yeah, just, just. but I think you know um, Micah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I have her on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> of course. And she's gonna be joining us tomorrow. <laughs> yes, she That's will awesome. be. Cho- yeah. Um, we'll be touching on some mental health tomorrow, so cool. it'll be nice. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Ted does get a lot of love, but uh, let's not forget Pepper is Radio Bulamasi. <laughs> not Ted. Okay? Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, to be honest, me and Ted are pretty solid when it comes to parenting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not going to lie, like, my father-in-law and mother-in-law had a lot to do with it as mm-hmm. well. I mean, I always let them... Um, I'm a very tolerant woman, believe it or not. Um, you know what? I really let them take them under the wing. You know, Takes all they village, wanted. Man. Yeah, you know what? They really wanted to. You know, they took interest mm-hmm. in everything they did. Yeah. You know, whether it be hockey, like my mother-in-law. You know, a week before she passed away, she had to see her grandson's um, gold medal game yeah. for hockey. My son's a goal, goalie, and so, you know what, she had to come and see the game. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. And, uh, yeah, it was, you know what, and if I stopped her, mm-hmm. yeah. which I really did want to because she wasn't well, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. she told me, she said, you know, she has to. And so I think that, you know, all of those kind of things, mm-hmm. um, you know, they see all those things. They see the value in, you know, in the teachings of their grandma, their grandpa, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. You know, grandpa's little gun juice, meaning tight with the money. Right? But I think so. it's important for them to see all sides of it. So <laughs> I think sides, maybe that's yeah. why yeah. they're more well-rounded, whereas you might have some kids that are more sheltered. Maybe mm-hmm. they don't have the village that Arif you're talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Um, so they only see maybe their parents, and then they look at the world as a certain place yeah. Yeah. because that's all they Limited, see. Right? Limited, sure. yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. And I always kept them very, you know, lots of sports. Yeah. Mm. Singing. Guitar, like I hit whatever. Yeah, I could put yeah busy. busy. Yeah. yeah, idle hands cause trouble for sure. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. So you, so you went the route of high school, college. Mm-hmm. What led you to wanting to work in the nightlife? Sure. So, like mm-hmm. we were just talking about opportunities. Yeah. Um, uh, well, first of all, just being a 19-year-old brown kid trying to get into a club in Vancouver mm-hmm. was impossible in the 2000s. Um, you know, you pay $20 grease at the front, you pay $20 <laughs> cover, you pay $5 court check, you're in $50 before you had a drink. And back in the 2000s, $50 was like, you know, probably your budget for going out. <laughs> you know, okay, so before you get too far ahead, what, explain to people that may not have this experience, why? Why was it such a problem for a brown kid to get into a club? Oh, uh, well, you just, a it's a good question. Like, I mean, I guess we were typecasted as trouble. Right. Um, you know, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. They probably typecasted as not having enough money. Right. You know, like all these things uh, that happened in the 2000s. Like racism, of course, is alive today, but racism mm-hmm. was really alive back then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but, you know, like you said about opportunity, um, I saw a shady Craigslist ad one day that said, uh, do you, do you have a lot of friends? Do you like to party? Come get paid to party. And, you know, most people probably wouldn't have responded to that ad. Yeah. But this guy was like, hey, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great job. Yeah. So I responded to the ad and it was like this shady brown guy from Surrey <laughs> with like glasses and he's short. And I was like, I don't know, is this guy going to get me into a club? Maybe let's see. Yeah. And, and he did have some connections and, you know, we worked for a few um, uh, events mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, um, uh, the club we worked at at the time was plush. Oh, wow. And so that's a little bit of a throwback, but now mm. it's called uh, Harbor. Now Enzo, sorry, Enzo. Um, anyways, so we worked there for like three events, and then the owner of the club came up to me going like, hey, like, are you the Tubbs kid? And I'm like, yeah, what's up? And he's like, oh, you brought a lot of people. Like, well done. And I'm like, oh, thanks, mm. man. And he goes, you know, um, you brought like 80 people, right? And I was Dang. like, I was like, yeah, like I was a hustler. Like, mm. I, I, I drove around everywhere selling tickets. I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> and you, and we're, and we're, and uh, anyway, so he's like, you brought 80 people. And he's like, I'm like, yeah. And he's like, your whole company brought 100. So you brought like 80 of the 100. And I was like, uh, I guess. I didn't know that. I didn't know the whole company brought 
80, 100 <laughs> people. And so he goes, uh, how much are they paying you? And I'm like, a uh, dollar a head. Back then, 80 bucks and a couple of free drink tickets. I mean, I was hooked. Damn. You know? Yeah. And he goes, really, a dollar a head? He's like, come work for me. I'll give you $3. I was like, wow. bet, let's go. So then, you Even know. you deserved way more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, back then, like, that wouldn't, pay for, that wouldn't pay for my gas, you know, yeah, like to get around, sell those tickets and all that. But, um, you know, it was fun. I enjoyed it. And uh, it was kind of like a... You know, while I was in college, like, do that for fun. And mm-hmm. then eventually I started seeing, like, hey, there's actually, like, real money to be made. Started making more connections. Started working for different clubs like O-Bar and Postmodern and all these other places. And, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, just making those relationships with the owners and getting my own contracts became way easier and way better as I gained more credibility. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that $1 turned to $3, turned to $5, turned to, like, hey, you know, we'll give you part of the percentage from the door. Right. And we'll give you a percentage from... This and that. And, yeah. you know, here we are today with, you know, running, you know, four nights a week right now at the Damn. moment. And, uh, you know, pretty uh, hopefully now without any closures, uh, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll be able to actually make a decent income. So, yeah. So, so life, like we had you on October mm-hmm. and 20, 2019, no, 2020. October 2020. It was, was, it was, was during the re- pandemic because we were yeah, wearing masks, was, I remember. That's right. It was oh, during wow. the pandemic. And we brought him on. And, um, you know, there's so many sides to Ritesh, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, to Tubbs. And um, it, it's like peeling an onion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. This guy is um, absolutely amazing. Like, he has, he's lived uh, abroad. Uh, he's studied, uh, he used to do travel um, and tourism. And he's made so many different connections. And now his niche is the nightlife. And he's known as the guy. Yeah, yeah, the nightlife the guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, and... And to me, like, tell us a little bit, like, now, from then to October to now, tell us a little bit of what's happened. Like, I mean, like, you've done so much. It was a lot, it was a lot of pivoting, Mm -hmm. you know, like, throughout the pandemic, Mm -hmm. like, the one, one of the places I work at is called Mm Cabana, and um, this was one of the places, because of the layout of the club, because we had a lot of booths, because... Mm -hmm we didn't have a massive dance floor, we were actually able to stay in operation for a lot of the pandemic Mm -hmm. because we could run it as a restaurant. So there were pivots as, you know, we would do table service only. Mm -hmm. You know, we would do six people per table and, you know, the vibe wasn't like nightclub party vibe, but we were able to still keep our jobs and kind of keep a little bit of money Mm -hmm. coming in and, Mm -hmm. and run it. And then, you know, they said, hey, you have to be selling food. So we said, cool. Domino's Pizza across the street. We're going to buy like 15 oh. pizzas a week from you and sell them at our club, you know? And so we pivoted again. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, whatever we could do to keep the doors open, we just kept trying. Um, and, you know, I got to give it to the owner of the club to to be that resilient because a lot of the other places said, you know, it's not worth the hassle. We'll see you when this stuff's over. And, you know, close I had a lot and of, rebrand. Yeah, close and rebrand. I had yeah. a lot of friends in the industry that, you know, they lost their jobs. Uh, some people didn't come back because they're like, hey, now I'm like two years older and I'm in my 30s now. And, you know, I don't want to be a DJ anymore. I don't want to be a promoter anymore. Saw a lot of that. Yeah. And, you know, it, which is fine. Like, you know, you move on. But I feel bad for the places that, you know, lost their businesses mm-hmm. and had to shut down because there were tons um, of places that just went under and couldn't keep up with the bills. So, yeah, just pivoting. But yeah, point. you did a lot of pivoting. Yeah, yeah. tons. I mean, you had your hands in many different jars yep. to keep going. And I know that you got a little bit of flack for having pizza. Yeah. But that that kept your doors open. We, like you said, like I'm super positive, right? We had mm-hmm. people like making memes of us being like pizza delivery boys. This mm-hmm. and that, so blah, this blah. is where the pizza costume thing comes from. Yeah, yeah. Because I see in the Insta stories this mm-hmm. whole pizza thing where I'm like, why are these guys, why are you wearing a pizza costume for carrying pizza? So this is where it started. So we had to sell food and this was the way around it was we were selling pizzas in our club to keep right. it open. Um, and you know what? I said, any publicity is good publicity. So if you want to <laughs> send around memes and WhatsApp groups about me in a pizza costume, cool. Yeah. Like, uh, come through. <laughs> yeah. But did it ever, ever bother you? Yeah. I mean, there's always like a little yeah. chip. Like when you first see something, yeah. you always get a little like thrown off or mm-hmm. like, why would someone do this? Or that's mm-hmm. kind of mean. Mm-hmm. But then you just kind of laugh. Like I'm, I'm a big believer in positive thinking and mm-hmm. like I do a lot of personal development and all that. And it's one of those things that's like, if it's not something you can change, why be upset about it? You know, mm-hmm. so it's like, OK, am I going to go find this guy and beat him up? <laughs> no, like, you know, <laughs> no, so you see the silver lining in it. And the silver lining was, hey, that picture probably got shared, you know, hundreds of times. And, you know, that probably brought a few people through the club knowing that we're open. Yeah. Be great. So, yeah. yeah. 
I'm Isn't sure it was a lot more than a few. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about this weekend. I mean, floodgates open. Amazing. Like, Vancouver came back hard. Wow. Yeah, we, I just got off. chills. I just got chills. It was <laughs> nuts. Like, we had six events, and all six were sold out, Oof. like, to the brim. Um, and not even just, like, like we set records, like sales mm-hmm. records, people in their records. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I think on Saturday night at the club, we turned away 300 people. Damn. Like, we weren't yeah. even the busiest club out there. I have pictures from levels that had, like, a 1,000 people in each direction, and their capacity is only 500 people. Like, you know, like, it's it's crazy. Like, people wanted to dance. People wanted to come mm-hmm. out. People wanted to see their friends. Let's be around people. Mm-hmm. Just be around people. The mm-hmm. energy was unreal, and I love it. And I hope, like, you know, we can keep the momentum up for, you know, all the businesses. And I hope, you know, your next few months are fruitful. Um, and, you know, we kind of make that money back that we lost for not really being in proper business for the last two mm-hmm. years. A lot of people weren't in business at all for two years. Yeah, big Like, time. you know? Big time. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, Crazy. I know a lot of DJs, a lot of performers that literally had zero income and had to essentially give up their dream and find a day job. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and I don't think people understand how detrimental it is to an artist mm-hmm. that just wants to chase their dream and is just kind of starting to break ground and make moves mm-hmm. and then it all stops. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you're forced to do something remedial because you got to pay bills. Like um, like Pepper was saying, like I was in travel before, so I was a travel agent for about eight years. Oh, wow. Uh, with Flight Center. Mm-hmm. And I was, I've been a club promoter for, at that time, about 13 years. Damn. Um, and COVID stopped both of those incomes <laughs> in a heartbeat. Oh and for that first year, we didn't open. We didn't pivot because no, we didn't know how bad it was going to be. We didn't know how scary it was. Mm-hmm. So everything was closed. And I myself, same thing. I mm-hmm. pivoted and I found a new job as a talent agent in TV and film. And I did that for about a year and a bit because I was just like, got to find work, got to go do something. I'd never done anything Mm -hmm. before, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I just took the, took, took the reins and tried to try something new. And it was great. It was was a lot of fun. uh, Ignite. Ignite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of fun. Did that for about a year and a half. uh, half. We still have a great relationship Mm -hmm. where I still refer them a lot of new actors and things like that. And, uh, we have some events coming up with them where, you Mm -hmm. know, I'm going to be hosting the events. And so they kind of, you know, we kind of collab with that. So it's a great partnership still. But when the clubs opened, I told them, I'm like, Hey, I got to go back to my passion, my baby. And, uh, (laughs) you know, I pivoted back this way. So, so tell me a little bit more about your passion, your baby. Now, there's more to it than it just, it's not just about a club promoter. There's so many aspects of what goes on behind the scenes. Totally. So, like, yeah. for, for what we do, like, okay, obviously we do the nightclubs, mm-hmm. but we also do a lot of private events. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we do um, concerts, you know, like, I cannot wait to get back into concerts. We we actually have another brand underneath that was entertainment that not a lot of people know about called Club Mumbai. Um, mm-hmm. which is a South Asian brand of nightlife and all mm-hmm. that. We just did a concert for them uh, last Sunday, which was, like, record-breaking. And, mm-hmm. like, um, yeah, so, like, there's all these... a couple diff- of those nights, man. Mm-hmm. It's popping. It's fun. So there's, yeah. we, there's a lot of these yeah. different things mm-hmm. that we're trying uh, to do. And, you know, like, we have a really great team. Like, I have a great mm-hmm. team of, of DJs. My partner, Jag, is amazing. Like, he knows everyone in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, we're just trying to build up our guys so like Mm -hmm. you know whether it's our djs or promoters we're trying to get them gigs whether it's at our events or not Mm -hmm. like we're just trying to get them gigs build them up Mm because we want them to have a full resume we want them to go out there and be known you know and you know what it's always um like you know how we were talking about niche niches and clicks and stuff Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. Uh, for me like i try to like you know work with everybody whether or not they want to work with me we'll try to go and support their gigs (laughs) so you know um we'll send them our djs um and and we'll send them business. Mm-hmm. For example, tomorrow there's a new night opening up at Ombre, mm-hmm. which is a new I club. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and one of my main guys, Wreckage, he's going to be DJing there. Shout out Wreckage. Mm-hmm. Shout out Wreckage. Uh, I think you guys had him on your podcast, right? We had him on our podcast. Yeah. We're going to have him on the show. Perfect. And he's actually going to be on our live event. Oh, yeah, yeah. Trip, I saw the High Praise yeah. live event doing some comedy as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, we put the little relationship with Wreckage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Super entertaining. So, yeah. they, so they have a night tomorrow. And, uh, you know, um, uh, tomorrow at the Connects game, they're honoring Black... Uh, was it Black, Black History Month? Black yeah. History Month? Yeah. And uh, one of our guys, Terrell Safadi, shout out to him. He's going to be performing there that. to great. honor uh, Black History Month. Yeah. And uh, Terrell amazing. reached out, his people reached out to me, and they go, hey, we'd love to, like, you know, come to Cabana or do, like, an after party or blah, blah, blah. And I'm mm-hmm. like, hey, actually, you know, I'm only running an Indian night, which is probably not your vibe. So <laughs> so tomorrow, why don't I send you to these guys' event, and, and you can, you know, host your after party there. And, you know, they were ecstatic. And, yeah. uh, and, you know, now I'm able to connect these guys and they're going to have even a doper party yeah. because, you know, Terrell's going to show up and pop off with his people. And That's you great. know Wreckage is just going to rock that. 
Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's a party starter. I everywhere, know. Everywhere he, is. he goes. He's yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 So what is what is the dream for you with Tubbs Entertainment? What is the what is the next step outside of mm-hmm. nightlife? Well, the end goal for me would be well, outside of nightlife. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but um, <laughs> outside of nightlife, I don't know. Live somewhere hot for six months and live yeah. here for six months. That'd be the Facts. dream. Yeah, like my like my family is from India. My wife is from India as well. Okay. And you know, I think the dream for us would be. Let's go, you know, live there for six months when it's cold and, you know, come back here in the summer mm-hmm. when it's six months. Like, that's, well, you, you used to live out there, right? I lived there for two years when yeah. I was 22. Yeah, yeah I moved out yeah. there. It was great. And, uh, you know, I'd love to go back and, you know, build a life out there and here. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of the end goal. But I think the next progression for me is eventually mm-hmm. I want to open my own club. You know, I've uh, I've uh, thought of a few th- ideas that I want to do. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's not that uh, promoting is great. I love it. But, you know, booze is where the real money is. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. the amount of m- money uh, that is made in booze, like mm-hmm. you yeah. guys would be shocked. If you need a yeah. DJ, I'm available. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I've, I've, I've been around, man. The, the alcohol markups are outrageous, but but when people are drinking, they mm-hmm. want to drink more. Mm-hmm. They want to drink more. It's all about the show and the party and the excitement. So, are we trying to make sure. all about drinking? Right. <laughs> Don't drink it all? Probably the only hip hop artist in the club that doesn't drink. But yeah. that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. There's other vices we can partake in. Yes, sir. Um, so, you lived in India. Yep. Now this is a, a, a weird one for me because our ancestry is Fijian. Yes. Once yep. departed from India. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we speak a version of Hindi yep. that Fiji only Hindi. Fijians speak. Yep. And when you were so you speak like formal so I Bollywood speak, Hindi. I speak both because my dad oh. is from Fiji. Oh, crazy! My dad's from Suva. Uh, wow. My mom is from India, hmm. um, but we're Gujarati. So at home, right. we've never really spoke a lot of Hindi. It's mostly been Gujarati. Mm. But when any of my dad's family comes around, the Kesehe's come <laughs> out and, you know, the Fijian <laughs> Hindi's there and the slang. Um, I can understand it great. Sometimes yeah. I can't keep up, but it's, it's, it's good. It's there for sure. So you, it, like, formal Hindi is not one of your languages? Uh, I actually did a lot of Hindi school here. So I went to, like, you know, the temple here and mm-hmm. Shiv Mandir mm-hmm. back in the day mm-hmm. on Napier Street. And, yeah, you know, yeah. they did Hindi school and the formal Hindi, you know, just the mm-hmm. Fijian Hindi. But, um, yeah, so I learned how to read and write it a little bit. And mm-hmm. there was a Gujarati school here as well, which I took. And so I learned a little bit of Gujarati as well. So that's why uh, the company I worked for when I was 22, when they mm-hmm. hired me to go to India, I was a good asset for them because I could speak both languages right. and I could read and write a little bit right. as well. So that's yeah. why I went out there for two years, which mm-hmm. was sick. My kids went to the same Hindi school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so you're obviously a mad people person. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of entertainment, but you preferred not to be in front of the camera. I don't. I don't love being in front of the camera. I am a behind the scenes. I'm an organizer. Mm-hmm. That's what I am. I'm, I'm the guy. I can think of everything that's going to go wrong and everything I got to worry about beforehand so that Priceless. things can happen. Right. Priceless. But. You know, wreckage every now and then will throw me the mic and be like, yo, say something. And I'll be like, <laughs> you know, so that's not me. It, or maybe if I'm drunk enough, who knows? But yeah, <laughs> because I can tell you as, as just on the artist side of things, mm-hmm. I've never had to organize a particular event. Mm-hmm. And uh, being that this is our first one, me and my partner, we came into so many obstacles mm-hmm. that we had no idea existed. Yeah. And it was a massive learning experience. It's one of those things, if you don't know, you don't know, right? Yeah. And if you don't have people that are willing to stay supportive, you could fall flat in your face yeah. hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we're very fortunate that we have people that were kind of in our corner, had our back, and like, you know, kept pushing cool. us in the right direction. So, but maybe next time what we'll do is we'll talk to you first. Right. Help me. <laughs> yeah. Let me help you. Yes. Your yes. <laughs> because it, to me, it's all about promoting the talent, making sure talent gets seen and heard because mm-hmm. there's so much of it here mm-hmm. and it's underappreciated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's undervalued. It's not really not shown the way it should be. Like I, I can count dozens of Indian artists, mm-hmm. MCs, singers, actors, mm-hmm. and we don't see them. Yeah, they work, they build their craft, they work hard, they try and get great at what they do. Yeah, mm-hmm. but the opportunities for someone that looks like us are not there. Mm-hmm. We kind of get pigeonholed into the same kind of stereotypes. Mm-hmm. You're going to be the person that drives a cab, or yeah. that is in a grocery store, or that's a terrorist, or that's mean and angry. <laughs> All these things that people like to, you know, pass off judgment Mm -hmm. as. But I think you are a great example of what a brown person can be without Mm -hmm. any stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Because there's really not, I mean, I'm sure you can speak to this too. There's really not a lot of Indian dudes that are really that positive and outgoing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They all have a front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could beat you up. I know more people than you. I'm richer than you. I've got a better car than you. There's all this all these fronts and all these facades tons Mm -hmm. of ego Mm -hmm. right so (laughs) how do you turn that off or is that something that you just never came with yeah like i mean 
That's a great question. Yeah, I'm like, wow. I, I don't think, yeah. Like, I, I don't want to, like, me saying that I have no ego would be egotistic. So I can't, <laughs> sure. I can't even say that. Facts. But I just think for me, like, I just try and find the silver lining. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm one of those people, I'm very third-person objective. Mm-hmm. So even if, like, you're wreckage and you're one of my main guys, or yep. you're DJ Nick, you're one of my main guys, mm-hmm. if you're doing something wrong or you're upsetting, you know, person X over here, guess what? Like, I'm going to tell you straight. You know, I've been very, very objective in that sense. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think for me, like, that's why there's never been any ego towards anyone because Mm -hmm. I'll be like, okay, well, why would I say this to them? I wouldn't want to hear it from them. So, Mm -hmm. just you know, it's never, never a thing. So, yeah. Here's what I see from the outside. Mm. When I see him in action, because I have gone a few times, (laughs) and uh, what I see is, you know what? He's just in his, he's in his element. Yeah, and he just does, doesn't let people in. Mm-hmm. Like he just doesn't allow that energy to. It just bounces right off, right? Well, the thing is, you're in you're in the most mm-hmm. you're in an environment yeah. that can be extremely superficial and extremely judgmental. Mm-hmm. And being someone that's been a club goer and also a performer at clubs, mm-hmm. the experience can be horrible. Yep. If you don't have money, mm-hmm. and you just have enough to get in and mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. dance. Uh, if you don't have money, you don't have a click. You don't have the right gear, or wardrobe. It can be a really upsetting and bad experience. Yep. Mm-hmm. From the bouncers to the coat check people to the bartenders, they really don't make it an in, in, in inclusive and welcoming place. Yep. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you, so uh, one night I was able to do a, a stand-up night at Levels with you guys. And I see you at the bar, and you talk to everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no worries. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And from my dozens of years of being in clubs, promoters don't do that. Yeah, promoters find a spot, they post up. T- they take the table, they post up. You know, they surround mm-hmm. themselves with girls and guys or whatever, and they make sure that I'm seen. This is my spot. Yeah, That's my so night. True. That's good. Yeah. yeah, and and I think I wouldn't really, even thought about that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, you see it all the time. And I think the really dope thing is when you go to a night that's Tubbs Entertainment. I think people are most people that I've talked to have an expectation. Mm-hmm. That they're gonna be able to walk in the club and have a drink with you. Yeah, because mm-hmm. that's yeah. yeah. That's I, I don't think I, I mean maybe you do understand how big of a deal that is. So the per- perfect word I'll give you, and mm-hmm. this is I've only been able to tally this down because I've heard it from so many different people. Mm-hmm. They go when we come to your event, it's a homey vibe. Mm-hmm. They're like you know when we come in, we don't feel the pressure to hey you gotta spend money, you mm-hmm. gotta look a certain way, you gotta dress a certain way, you gotta. They, you come in, everybody on your team, everyone gives us smiles. You know, even mm-hmm. if they've only met us once, they still greet us with the same energy and they make us feel welcome. Mm-hmm. And and I go, you know what? That's such a good way to put it. It is it is the homey vibe, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I think it goes back to me being a bis- misfit, man. Just trying to please everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, though? It's, it starts with you. Yeah. Like the energy and the vibe you create starts with you. Absolutely. And I think your DJs accept that and then they kind of adopt that same vibe and the same personality. So, wh- wh- who are what is your roster of DJs right now? Who's on the roster of the tubs? Yeah, so like, um, so Wreckage is our main guy who you know is like kind of the coordinator for all of our events for mm. the DJs and, and and our like entertainment coordinator pretty cool. much, right? Um, but our probably our biggest DJ is DJ Nikki, who's also a Fijian guy. Right, right. His name is Lance. Um, he, Emma, him and I started this maybe like eight years ago, mm-hmm. eight nine years ago. I found him DJing at Brentwood Mall. Wow. Uh, yep, for a pair of jeans. And I was like, yo, man, you need to come DJ for me. You're a great DJ. Mm-hmm. This man's so humble. He played for me for two years for a $50 bar tab. Damn. And just happy to be in the club. It's crazy. You know? Mm-hmm. And then we started, you know, building him up. He came up second string, first string DJ, headliner. He had five nights a week. He was playing Dre's here when Dre's was over mm-hmm. here in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had five nights a week in Vancouver. Then we started doing tours. We took him to across Canada. We took him to Montreal, Toronto, Calgary, all that. We took him to L.A. We did a four-show t- a tour in South California. We went to Scottsdale. We He t- went to Asia. He And right now during COVID, mm-hmm. he booked a one-way t- flight and went to Mexico for the last two years and DJed yeah. in Mexico and played mm-hmm. at Carmen for two years. It's amazing. And he just came back two months ago before things op- opened up. So, you know, another brown guy that's doing it. Love um, it. And so he's beautiful. amazing, actually. He's, he's, he's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, Wreckage, DJ Nikki, those are our main guys. Uh, we have a couple of awesome up and comers as well. So, another Fijian kid, actually, again, and now that I think about it, that's another Fijian guy. Um, Avi, his name is DJ Prince. Uh, great DJ, humble kid, super young. Um, but, like, he has the 
the thing I saw in Nikki eight years ago. That's dope. You know, and I said mm-hmm. that to him one day, and I go, you know what, Len? Like, you just need to, you know, work a little harder. Like, he's a really good DJ, mm-hmm. but also he's always, like, you know, willing to work, and he's a great kid. So we're going to take him under wing, show him a few things. Um, and we have a bunch of guys. Like, we have OGs like DJ Physic. Uh, we have Ni- uh, DJ Nizzy, who's also an OG. He's been around forever. Yeah. Um, Sam Hampton, who's, a you know, a great, great uh DJ, he plays a bunch of like he, he's probably the only guy I know that plays like seven days a week. Dang. Like he plays mm-hmm. every single night. He's either at like Granville Room, Pawn Shop, he's at a club, he's playing levels, he's playing cabana. He's working. Yeah, he's working. That guy's probably one of the hardest workers in the <laughs> game, but he's the quietest guy. You'll never see him even in the he might be DJ, you might not even see him back there. He's a little short guy. Get him on the table. But, that's yeah, it. but he's 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 always working. Um but yeah, we got a good team, man. I I've I've heard we'll probably save this for when we have you on our uh, high phrase podcast because I, I hear it may be a little little bit R rated. Um, but we heard some stories about the Scott, this Scottsdale trip oh. <laughs> from wreckage. Yeah. And, uh, l- from what he told me, it sounded like an incredible time. Yeah. We took him for his 30th birthday. And, and I, I heard it, w- it was, uh, a little nuts. It was nuts. To say the least. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. So you obviously know how to throw a good party. Absolutely. So, okay. A couple of, couple of random questions I want to ask you then. What would you say are the three songs that are guaranteed to get people on the dance floor? Oh, uh, that's a good one, man. Like, I mean, I would ask the DJs, like, I don't, I, like, don't get me wrong. I listen to tons of music, mm-hmm. but when I'm not in the club, I don't listen to a lot of party bangers. Okay. I Like, I'll listen to, like, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh. Like, I'll listen to, like, you know, more calm music, whatever. Like, mm. yeah, like, it's, like, yeah, I'll listen to like Oasis, Wonderwall, like yeah, oh, okay. r- random <laughs> random stuff that's not like a banger. Like I even yeah, have a list nice. right now of like soft tunes that I'm listening to in the car <laughs> because like I'm always around like high party mm-hmm. music. So yeah. you know I probably couldn't give you three, but yeah, mm. like if you ask Wreckage, those guys will give you the top ten. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. So yeah. I-, I was gonna say, what would be your personal song choices that you would play at a club? Okay, so if I, okay, so like I said, I have a vision for opening a nightclub. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to be a hip hop club because mm-hmm. I love hip hop, obviously. Sure. Um, I want to call it Juice because I think it brings us back to like our, our days in the 90s, I 2000s, right? I would play 90s and 2000s hip hop and that's it. Nothing else. Just so mm-hmm. much. I think so much. I think like that era of partying mm-hmm. and the dancing you can do with 2000s mm-hmm. music mm-hmm. and the vibe that you get in 90s, I think that's that's it. For me, that's heaven. If I can listen to that mm-hmm. every day at the club. That's pretty that dope. That would be my heaven, too. That's kind of dope. Yeah. yeah. And I love that. Because I, I grew up in, like, the two, 2000s, mm-hmm. like, at the clubs, right? You know, you're mm-hmm. there, and, you know, you hear, like, Rihanna, and, you know, you mm-hmm. hear, like, all these great songs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but, yeah, so. It's oh, my God, it's taking it's, me back. It's taking me back yeah. to California. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, so. the Bay Area vibe. I love that. I think that it really needs to come back. So do you really listen does. to any current hip-hop? I do, I, I do, you know, like, obviously I lo- love Drake, um, you know, I, uh, like, yeah, like, I listen to all the new guys, I love St. John, I'm pumped for his concert mm-hmm. coming up and on uh, August 4th, me and Wreckage are going, um, but, like, I just, I think when it comes to dancing, mm-hmm. it's not, it, they're bangers, but they're not dancing music. It's a vibe, mm-hmm. it's a vibe. Right, it's a vibe. Yeah. right, yeah. so, um, I think that. Like now that like, we were talking about like posting up and stuff, I think mm-hmm. that's what people like doing in the club. They like getting a table. They like yes. posting up. They like partying. But when we were in the 2000s, man, dancing, grinding, like that whole like vibe was different. Mm-hmm. Dude, you come out the club at the end of the night and you are covered in sweat. Yes. Mm-hmm. Covered yeah. from dancing. And also that's the things that's changed. Like when we used to go clubbing, mm-hmm. I used to go with one, two other buddies and the goal was to pick up chicks. <laughs> you know, like that's where you go out and you that's where you go to the club. Now now people pull up, you know, ten deep, you know, they don't want to talk to any girls, they're hoping girls are gonna come talk to them. Like, why do you think any girl would talk to you? You came with nine other dudes, like you well, know you look terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Everyone looks angry. Yeah. You are not getting you're not pulling any girls with yeah. that vibe. You're not going to the dance floor, you're just waiting in a corner hoping someone's gonna talk to you. It's, it's ridiculous. Just, it's, it's a self, different world. The self importance. It's such a different world. Yeah. 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 So so without calling out anyone's name. <laughs> What is the most ridiculous request you've had at a club night? Besides brown music? <laughs> <laughs> for real? Besides brown music? I don't know. Like people ask you for bo- like to play Bollywood music? 
Oh no, Punjabi bangers like all the t- dude. Oh, right. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> we before this, before I got here, me wreckage and our DJ chat, we were just talking about how I should get all the DJs shirts made that say hundred dollars for a brown song, <laughs> like you know, because we get so many requests for them. So yeah. instead of having that conversation every two minutes, yeah. just get, I'm gonna get you guys all shirts that say hundred dollars for a brown song. Mm-hmm. So the the rule of thumb that I have with these guys is if you're making money, play it, but not before two a.m. Because we don't want to turn into a, like a you know Bangla party. Night, yeah. yeah. Shout out yeah. to all the Punjabi, but all the Punjabi dudes out there that think and, that only Bangla music matters. And and don't get me wrong, <laughs> some of them are bangers yeah. for sure. And you know what? Oh, yeah. A lot of like um, the oh. Caucasian like staff that we have, <laughs> they love some of them. Like they like they yeah. actually know the words. Like I have this. I'll show you a video <laughs> after this. I have this one busser that works with us and he loves singing that Beva Fa song oh, like, yeah. like at the top of his lungs That's every time crazy. it comes on and he even he even went viral on like TikTok because oh of it um, so, so, funny. so like you know they're bangers don't get me wrong mm-hmm. but um, after 2am because we don't want to you know mm-hmm. get move the hip hop vibe um, and our guys got to make money so you want to tip him 100 bucks by all means, do it. Or or go check out Club Mumbai on. Or come to Club Mumbai, yeah. listen to all yeah. the Indian music yeah, you want. That's right. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Okay. Shout out to Andrew, right? Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Andrew. Uh, shout out Club Mumbai. Yeah. They're the guys making it happen. And okay, without again, without calling it about, uh, anyone's name, what is the most expensive bar tab you've seen? Oh, bar tab like by one table? Yes, for the night. I think. So on one of my nights, I'd I'd say the highest tab I've ever seen was like thirteen k. Wow! On one of my nights, um, but I do know Ooh. of someone that spent forty thousand on a different club on a different night. Wow! Goodness. Yeah, um, it's Vancouver. Exactly. Some people ha- people have money. Like it's nuts. Mm-hmm. It's so a world of extremes for sure. But yeah, people have money. Forty grand. Wow. Forty grand in one night on booze. Wow! That's a lot of booze. <laughs> I well, know, the I thing is, they're, they're not buying three hundred dollar bottles. Mm-hmm. These guys are buying eight hundred dollar mm-hmm. bottles of Dom Perignon. They're buying, you know, mm-hmm. the 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 Remy Martins, the Louis Thirteens, the more expensive God, stuff. Feel right? real okay. broke. So no, yeah. so no uh, absolute. Turn, no, 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 none no. of that stuff. No, oh, exactly. That's the kind of stuff I drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just hey man, I I asked for a, a cranberry Seven Up, and the bartender just looked at me like. Were you six? <laughs> like, bro, I don't drink. What do you want me to get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta get well, rid of something. Get him, uh, Temple yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so, so oh, one so more so about the bar tap thing. Um, what's the most? What's what's normally the most expensive bottle that's carried at a club? Mm. That that consistently yeah. gets bought. I'd say Dom Perignon or Ace of Spades, the two champagnes. Mm. They're probably the ones that you know we'll go through ten bottles a, a night with on them, and they're like. Seven or eight hundred dollars each. God, yeah. Damn. So that's like the casual one for sure. So I wanted to ask you. Thanks. Between men and women, mm-hmm. who spends the most? Of course, men. I'm Re- honestly like, like it's even not even now, a sec- it's even not even now. a sex- sexist thing. Like, okay. like okay, I okay. like okay. Even when I go out to Vegas or yeah. whatever, like I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. Me and my wife went to Vegas for two different bachelor and bachelorette parties. Mm-hmm. Three months apart, I spent like four thousand dollars. Okay, which was stupid because I went with fourteen other lawyers and we were just trying to keep up, right? Yeah. Um, but she went three months later for a bachelorette party. She spent three hundred dollars, right? And I go, I go, yeah, like that's wicked. I was like, you saved money, like thanks for making up for like what I spent. Um, but she's like, yeah, she's like, it was strange. Like we went to all these tables and made friends and had their drinks, and I'm like, drinks for you, and I'm like. <laughs> Do it more. <laughs> Go milk it. Because guess what I'm doing? We're inviting people to drink all our liquor. Like, you know, <laughs> right, like it's the right. same. So it's the same. It's it the turns same. around. It turns okay. around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But but you know what? I, I Don't get me wrong. Post-pandemic now. Mm-hmm. I, can, I don't even know if I can call it post-pandemic. But Almost. I've actually seen a lot more groups of girls do bottle service, mm-hmm. which has been really mm-hmm. cool and refreshing. And most of it mm-hmm. is because, one, they haven't been able to dance in two years, mm-hmm. see their right. friends in two years. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Maybe they're a bit older and they have the money now and they've saved mm-hmm. up. And they're like, you know what? We can spend this now. So I shout out to all those girls that have been booking mm-hmm. through me. Appreciate you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've been seeing a lot more groups of mm-hmm. girls just coming out and just doing their thing mm-hmm. and wanting to enjoy themselves. And also, like, some guys are creepy. They don't want to be talking to everybody. Lots you know? of guys are creepy. You know, lots of guys you're being kind. Creepy. I'm being yeah. kind, yeah. yeah. But, um, if you're at a club and you're trying to be, you know, get a girl's attention, looking at them like this. 
Yeah. Don't be creepy, guys. Yeah. Come on. That's not the vibe, yo. <laughs> You're not trying yeah. to fight somebody. Yeah. Be friendly. Be, be friendly. playful. Yeah. You know, like momentum, man. Yeah. Oh, everyone comes to talk to me at the club. If I post up, they're all gonna come say hi. So, yeah. <laughs> and you, this is a. I always want to know how annoying people can get. But what is the most annoying thing that your friends do when you have a club night? The thing that just makes you hate people. I don't think you hate anybody, but no. Okay, so I would say the most annoying thing is when they don't listen, right? So like, they, you know, there be points in the nights where things get really busy, get, things get crazy, mm -hmm. or maybe they're just too drunk or whatever it is, right? So I've had friends where the bouncers come up and be like, your friend's had a lot, man. This guy's like all over the place. Like, you know, he's chatting up everyone. Can you just tell him to sit down? And I'll be like, yo, man, sit down. <laughs> like, just stay here. Like, don't get kicked out of the club. It's going to be embarrassing for both of us. You know, and they'll be like, yeah, man, yeah, Tab's all good. And then I turn around and he'll be gone. And, you know? So, like, shit like that. Like, if I tell you, man, just chill. Just have some water. Like, just listen to me. Um, so that, like, if they don't listen. Or, like, you know, when, um, you know, we're overcrowded and, you know, the bouncers are like, hey, we just can't let anybody in. We're over capacity. And, and like, I'll have friends being like, come on, man, just get me in. I'll be right. like, you know, just chill. We just, you know, we had, like, an inspection. We're over capacity. Mm -hmm. Our numbers are too high. Let's let a few people bleed out. Give me 20 minutes. I even tell people, go to another club or we'll walk around, have a drink, have a pizza. Come back in 20 minutes. I'll get you in. No, man, you can do it, man. Come on, you're the man. <laughs> I am, but like, there's only so many things I can do. I'm not this. a superhero. I'm not a superhero. I can't. I can't make ten people leave the club. Like, come on, man, just let a few people bleed out, and I'll get you in. So it's just people need to be a little bit more understanding and understand yeah. what we're going through, yeah. and uh, and know that you know we're probably way more stressed than you are about you not getting in the club. Trust me. So have people held grudges? And been bitter about those things. Ah, uh, people get over it. People say dumb shit when they're hammered. <laughs> uh, but but I don't think anybody really holds grudges. I think people like I've had times where in the night people are like, "Man, you're stupid, man. You can't get me in." <laughs> and then the next day they'll be like, "Yo, man, I'm sorry, I went off on you." And I'm like, "Man, if you just waited, like I could have done something." You're doing fine. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. But yeah. See what did I say? I tell you, he's just a positive big <laughs> teddy bear. It's very you know, valuable. You know, I do have to say. Like there is a soft side because mm -hmm. mm. he's a married guy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and very loyal. Yep. And so tell us like a little bit about that. I mean, obviously you work some crazy shifts. Yep. And that's for like the whole entire like I mean you're on you're on ten from Thursday to let's say Sunday. Yeah. Right. Hundred percent. Yep. And exactly. so, like, tell us a little bit, just, uh, I mean, just a quick brief, yeah, like, you know, like, you know, okay. I'd like to get in. <laughs> like, nightlife is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Facts. And like nightlife is not for everyone's mm. partner. <laughs> yes. You got to have a very supportive partner, mm -hmm. uh, a very trusting partner mm -hmm. to let you work those crazy hours, let you come home at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, Cause you know, God knows what happens after 2 a.m. out there. Mm. Um, but you know, me and my wife, like she's very trusting. Mm. Uh, we've been married now. This is going to be our 10th year this December. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. Been married. Congrats, man. Uh, thank you. And, um, and she's the boss. Like she has her own business. Like we we opened a salon together last mm -hmm. year during the pandemic, mm -hmm. and uh, you know she's been crushing it there. And and uh, even when I started promoting, she she would come out a lot in the beginning because she wanted to see what it was about mm -hmm. and like what are you actually, what are you actually doing out there? You know, like <laughs> what does this promoting me. Yeah, what does this mean? <laughs> like you know, so um she would come out all the time and she got to, you know, meet all the people I work with. You know, mm -hmm. she'd meet like the servers and the bottle girls and like, you know, people mm -hmm. that I'm around all the time. And she, she saw what I was doing. And you know, about like a year and a half, two years after like being out all the time, she'd be like, I don't have energy for this shit. Like you can go out, That's you know? Uh, and she goes, yeah, like I've seen what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I met everybody out there. Just, you know, like mm -hmm. don't do anything dumb and mm -hmm. come home when, you know, when you can, and, you know? Yeah. She's super sweet. I yeah. know her. Loves, loves to sonam. And her beautiful boutique. She's amazing. Shut up, babe. What yeah. is the name of the salon called? Uh, Sodom's Beauty Boutique yeah. on 26th and Fraser. Oh, and she's right amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. Very professional environment. Mm -hmm. uh, I need some help. <laughs> and, uh, and I've been going to her. So uh, she's amazing. In fact, I'll be calling her soon. Yeah, she's yeah. great. So, like, because of the fact that she has her own goals, I have her goals, it's not, it's like, mm -hmm. it's you know, we just strive for, you know, creating a good life, and, and that's what we want to do. We want each other to reach our passions, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's important. I think people, the only time they have problems, not only time, but one of the reasons people have problems in their marriages mm -hmm. or, like, relationships is when you don't have your own passions. You know, you're already you're mm -hmm. always in other people's shit. Like, you know, figure, mm -hmm. figure your own facts, shit out. Facts, yo. Yeah. Facts. Be yeah. yourself. 
be yourself. Find, find out what you love. And yeah. chase it. Chase it. Yeah. So before we wrap it up and get out of here, um, for all the club promoters coming up, trying to get their own nights, mm-hmm. what would you say are the three most important things that mm-hmm. every club experience should have? Mm-hmm. Every club experience should yeah. have. Okay. So if you are going to a club, yep. what do you want to see Kay. when you walk into a club? Number one, good music. <clears throat> Absolutely. You mm-hmm. gotta have the entertainment, right? If you have a DJ that's gonna, you know, play flat music, like it's just not gonna be a vibe. Mm-hmm. Two, good ratio. No one wants to go into a club that has eighty percent dudes. You know, no like, sausage parties. I would, I would like that. <laughs> I'm just you bring for twenty minutes. After that, I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, probably, maybe, yeah. Good yeah, ratios, yeah. right? Yeah. Keep a good ratio on. Um, third thing. Um, Friendly people, man. Don't invite any shit starters. It's like, to be that. honest, mm-hmm. I've been doing this, like, now almost 15 years. Mm-hmm. And I've cut people off being like, hey, you're not allowed at my parties. Or giving them timeouts. I've had some people that are like, three months, don't come to any of my shit because you're a shit starter. Timeouts. Yeah. I you like know? that. You know? I like that. Timeouts. Like, I'm very, like I said, I'm very third-person perspective. Like, mm-hmm. very honest with people. And if, you know, guess what? If you've screwed up three times at my one of my parties and you got it kicked out mm-hmm. for, you know, starting shit or whatever mm-hmm. it is, Guess what? It's probably not the party. It's probably you. Facts. Mm-hmm. Right? So I've even had, like, one time where one of my uh, buddy's younger brothers came in, and I'm like, okay, you're buying all this Dom P. Do not spray it. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What does he do? Sprays it on the dance floor. Hits, like, every girl's trying to dance. And everyone was pissed off. I literally grabbed him by the ear, and I walked him on the club. He's like, yo, I didn't finish my drinks. And I'm like, bro, I don't Too care. Bad. I'm like, I told you, don't spray it. Now, guess what? I got all these people that are pissed off at me. Yeah. Who I got to probably buy a drink to make them feel feel better. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, make sure they at least get cleaned up or mm-hmm. hopefully not have to pay for anyone's dry cleaning. Yeah, yeah. man. People come dressed to kill. Are you trying to throw alcohol on people? Right? So it's Crazy. like, you know, and, and then, you know, now when he comes to our parties, like, he, he's, like, very humble. And, like, he'll sit there quietly <laughs> and be like, don't worry, I won't spray it. And I'm like, ah. But he understands because <laughs> I made it very apparent, like, don't be a shithead. It's not the vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's big. So yeah. there's a lot of strength behind that, too. Like, yeah, I mean, you be. have to be. Mm-hmm. Have yeah. to. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You let yeah. too much shit go, guess what? People will trample you over and you'll lose that vibe, right? You yeah. know, you might make that one guy happy that bought all that dog, but guess what? He pissed off 20 other people that are going to walk out now. So you don't want that to happen all the time. Mm-hmm. So all that experience from your high school to, uh, <laughs> to the um, to Sunset? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All groomed you. Ooh. Southeast fan. Yeah, Southeast fan, yeah. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we obviously want to, you know, everyone to feel safe and comfortable at the club mm-hmm. experiences. Yeah. Uh, and over the years, there have been a lot of promoters that have failed at that and created environments where women just don't feel safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they just don't go. Mm-hmm. What do you think is different about your nights that creates that kind of comfort where women feel comfortable being there just, you know, with one or two girlfriends and not have to worry about you know, 50 guys trying to jump on them throughout the night. It's it's the hominess, man. Like, so, like I said, like, our whole <clears> team <throat> brings that vibe where, you know, we don't we don't act creepy, we don't be creepy. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, like, I've noticed with a lot of the girls that come to our nights, um, they end up making friends with the staff or, like, the girls that work there as well. Mm-hmm. And then those girls feel more comfortable because they know everyone that works there. Mm-hmm. So I have so many, like, it's random. Like, sometimes on our nights off and I'll mm-hmm. see, like, one of our patrons and she's out at a different club and like three of our bottle girls are with her and I'll be like, how are they friends? And I'll be like, oh yeah, they met last week at the club. Mm-hmm. And now they're friends apparently. That's cool. Great. But like that, that creates a homie vibe again. Like now mm-hmm. they're hanging out outside of the, outside of the club, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so shout out to our staff. Like, you know, they make sure that people feel welcome and it's not just about that one sale mm-hmm. or that one, you know, mm-hmm. service. Mm-hmm. It's about, you know, creating that relationship mm-hmm. uh, for longevity. Right. That's mm-hmm. And that's the crazy thing. Like we actually have, I would say probably the highest retention of like regulars probably in the city because of that vibe that we create. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal. Totally. 100%. And I'm going to back that vibe up because they are very much that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I've definitely been to a few nights and I've had, had a great time as well. Mm-hmm. So where are, can people find you on social media? Absolutely. So um, business account tubs.ent on IG. Uh, personal account if you want to follow me, Insta tubs, I-N-S. T-A-T-U-B-B-S. Um, and uh, we actually have a Facebook page as well, Tubbs Entertainment. So just uh, Google that on Facebook. And yeah. And there. your regular nights? Uh, regular nights. So like I said, we do do uh, East Indian Night on Thursdays called Club Mumbai. Mm-hmm. Find us at Levels, which is 560 Seymour. Um, and then Fridays and Saturday nights, uh, we'll be at Cabana Lounge mm-hmm. uh, both nights. Um, and then long weekends, we run both 
places. Mm -hmm. So Cabana is a pajama party on long weekends. Ooh. And uh, Levels is a Club Mumbai concert series. That's so great. we'll be doing a lot more concerts with Club Mumbai there. So We're going to have Club Mumbai on. Yeah, Great. so my partner Andrew, he's really the face of it, and mm -hmm. he like does. That. I'm kind of the back, like I said, back end mm -hmm. guy. I don't want to be face of nothing. <laughs> um, but get Andrew on; he's gonna tell you a lot about it. I think mm -hmm. for your demographic of viewers too, mm -hmm. um, it's really cool to see the South Asian market get their own kind of platform. Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but we are in talks with a few different. Uh, festival organizers mm -hmm. that want to do like big Indian festivals here nice. in Vancouver. Nice. So I think that's be really cool. And uh, yeah, you'll see a lot more of us. It's mm -hmm. great, man. It's mm -hmm. great. And Pepper, where can uh, our listeners find you on social media? Do they have to? They have to. <laughs> She's like, don't they find me. <laughs> uh, Pepper Prasad on Instagram and Facebook. It's the same. Pepper Prasad. Uh, nice and easy. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's it's elite a l i t e. You can find me everywhere just as that. Uh, we do the High Phrase podcast. You can check us out on High Phrase podcast. It is uh, probably the most free speech podcast that exists. We pull no punches. It's just not what we do. Um, and of course, you can find me on Facebook as Arif Ali or Elite. Um, th every Thursday night, we normally do our show, but this is a very special exception because mm -hmm. we had tubs in the place available Wednesday. Brought him in here to do this. We'll be back tomorrow night mm -hmm. with. Manka Prasad. Who is? Uh, Pepper Prasad's daughter. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Shout out to Dreams Asian TV, Shana TV, Radio Bula Masti, uh, Aisha for giving us this platform. Mm -hmm. Much love, man. Hope you all enjoy your night. Thank Peace. you guys for having me. Yeah, Definitely. thank you. Bye. And thanks for joining the Tubbs and Arif show. <laughs> yeah. thank One you. night only. Yeah. yeah. One night.